This is Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to look at the Church of Philadelphia. And Philadelphia means brotherly love. Hebrews 13.1 says, let brotherly love continue. And if you look at Pro Proverbs 18.24, it says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And Jesus Christ is that friend. And this church loves Jesus Christ like a brother. John 15.13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. 1 John 4.19 says we love him because he first loved us. Jesus Christ laid down his life for the church of Philadelphia. And they will lay down their life for his name. So Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 7. It says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that it is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. We start out with some great descriptions of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in verse 7. First we see that he is holy. And Psalms 99 verse 5 says, Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Matthew 25 31 reveals he has holy angels. Psalms 11 4 says he has a holy temple. 1 Chronicles 16.10 talks about his holy name. Revelation 21.2 talks about his holy city. In Isaiah 6.3, the seraphims cry, Holy, 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 before his throne. He has a holy Bible. 2 Timothy 3.15 calls it holy scriptures. That holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, according to 2 Peter 1.21. Everything about Jesus Christ is holy. And he is also true, as the verse said in Revelation 3, 7. But looking at other verses about how he is true, we see Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King. At his wrath the earth shall tremble, and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. John 1, 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. When everything around you is a lie, a false flag, a cover-up, a false prophet, a false teacher, and false doctrine, and fake news, remember that the Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. When everything on TV is fake, and you have fake reality shows, remember you have a true Bible, and you have a true God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and He speaks to you with pure words of truth. Jesus Christ is holy, he's true, and Revelation 3, 7 also says he has the key of David. And if you look at Isaiah 22 and verse 22, it says, And the key of the house of David will I lay up on his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. So Jesus Christ has perfect control over David's covenant. Psalms 89, 34 says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David, his seed shall endure forever in his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. So he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth, as it says in Revelation 3, 7, this shows that the Lord Jesus Christ is in complete control, and he's the one that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. He's in complete control of it. Now he's going to get into some details about the church in Philadelphia. If you look at Revelation 3, 8, it says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. So he knows their works. They are a working church. They realize faith without works is dead. And what is the result of their works? Jesus Christ has set in front of them an open door. And this is where preachers get the saying, God opened a door for me. So they have an opportunity to put out the truth. And God loves humble men to put out his truth because then he gets the glory. And this church is just that because they have a little strength. 
And this can be better than having a lot of strength because when you have a little strength, you see yourself as weak and you rely on God more than someone who's strong. God seems to like little things and men that see themselves as little. Samuel says to Saul in 1 Samuel fifteen seventeen. it says, And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Proverbs fifteen sixteen. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. When you have a little strength and you're weak, you're then made strong. 2 Corinthians 12.10 Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. But this church has kept his word. That means they aren't Bible correctors. They don't slice up the King James Bible. They don't change the Bible to fit their beliefs instead of adjusting their beliefs to fit the Bible. John fourteen twenty three says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. The church of Ephesus is said to be, or is said to have left their first love in Revelation chapter 4, and maybe it's because they didn't keep his words as the church in Philadelphia. After all, he said, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and this is what the church in Philadelphia did, and will do. Uh, you have atheists that burn Bibles. They hate God. They hate a final authority. Bible correctors are no different. They want to be the final authority. And Jesus also said they haven't denied his name. This is the name above every name that they're not denying. Philippians 2.9 Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. They didn't deny his name to accept the name of the beast. Revelation thirteen seventeen says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this church of in Philadelphia, in the time of Jacob's trouble, in the future, they're not going to deny the name of Jesus Christ to take the name of the beast. Remember these churches were a literal church that was here when John was here. It's going to be a literal church in the time of Jacob's trouble. We can get practical application from these churches to apply to ourselves, And each church also represents a certain time in church history. And when they get in the time of Jacob's trouble, this church is going to keep his word and they're not going to deny the name of Jesus Christ, and take the name of the beast. And he didn't have to ask this church three times if they loved him because they didn't deny him three times like Simon Peter. They didn't deny him at all. And next we see this church that has kept his word aren't deceived by those who say they are Jews and are not. Revelation 3, 9 says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. These people, there's people that are claiming to be Jews, while they're actually satanic. They are meeting in synagogues, which, a, which is a Jewish meeting place, and this is dis done to deceive and attract the Jew. Compare this to how a megachurch today will attract unlearned baby and worldly Christians and the unsaved religious people. But if you're grounded in the truth and you're keeping his words, then you're less likely to be deceived. Jesus says he is going to make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. These replacement theology teachers today will give you the idea that the church has replaced Israel and that God is done with the Jew. But God is going to remind you that they are beloved for the Father's sake. Unsaved Jews go to hell, they don't get an automatic pass to heaven, and there's going to be a remnant of Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble that will turn to Jesus Christ. Revelation 3.10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The hour of temptation probably has something to do with the mark of the beast. Remember that understanding the mark of the beast is key for understanding the book of Revelation. Because today we don't have anything outside of unbelief in Jesus Christ that will damn a man to hell. But the mark of the beast automatically damns a man to hell fire.
And since these people in this church have kept the word of his patience, they will be kept from the hour of temptation. Hebrews 10.36 Remember the Hebrews primarily has doctrine for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, we can get practical application out of it, and it does have doctrine in there for us, but primarily the doctrine is for those in the future. It says, For you have need of patience. In Hebrews 10.36, After you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And then James is in the same uh, situation as Hebrews, where James at the beginning of the book says, To the twelve tribes of Israel. And it says in James 1.12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And then back to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11, it says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. The closer it gets to his coming, the harder it, harder it will be to live right, and the easier it will be to let things slip. This is a warning that they can lose their eternal rewards. Going along with the Antichrist will get you a loss of rewards. Second John 1 7 says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an Antichrist. Look not to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. So don't Go along with an Antichrist because that just might make you lose some of those rewards. Revelation 3.12 Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Notice these rewards they get for overcoming. Remember that church-age saints... That's us, have already overcome. According to 1 John 5, 4, we overcame when we believed the gospel. But these overcomers, in the time of Jacob's trouble, will get a pillar in the temple of God. They will get the name of God written upon them. And in Revelation 14, 1, the 144,000 are said to get the Father's name written in their foreheads. Number three, the name of the city of God is written on them, New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is the city that comes down out of heaven and sets above the earth. And number four, they get his new name. Revelation 19, 12, Jesus talks about having on his vesture and on his thigh a name written that no man knew but he himself. So it could be that name, or this could be referring to Jesus Christ giving them a new name, similar to how Paul had his name, or... His name was Saul, and they changed it to Paul. And God changed uh, Peter's name and other Bible characters, as you, as you know, like Abraham. His name was Abram. And now back to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It seems like Jesus Christ says this a lot, and that's because people are having a hard time listening, especially today. They have itching ears, and they want to. They only want to hear stuff that's going to make them feel good. They only want to hear prosperity preachers. But if you want to hear what Jesus Christ said, get a King James Bible. Listen to King James Bible preachers. Quit listening to worldly music. Quit watching worldly movies. And put in your ears things that represent the Lord Jesus Christ. But this has been the Church of Philadelphia.